it's time for festivities and there's no better way to celebrate it than by bringing home a brand new set of wheels. But in this video, we will not talk about petrol, diesel, and electric. Instead, we focus on the growing popularity of CNG cars. Why? Because of the sudden interest not just from the car makers but also the government. So which one should you consider? We have a ready reckoner just for you. A list of CNG cars is incomplete without Maruti Suzuki. The first one is the Maruti Suzuki Wagonar, one of the most popular CNG options in the market. Followed by the Urtica, one of the best selling CNG vehicles from Maruti. Our next three suggestions come with a twist. Unlike traditional CNG cars which compromise on boot space with a CNG tank, the Tata Punch, Tata Nexon and the Hyundai Exter CNGs bring the dual cylinder feature to the mix. Placed under the cargo area of the car, all three cars offer substantial luggage space. A big relief for new age customers looking for an economical alternative to petrol and diesel cars. But we are not done. For a complete understanding of our suggestions, continue watching the video till the end. As Minister Katkari recently announced a rapid expansion of CNG pumps from the current 6,000 to 20,000 by 2030. A giant leap for sure. But since the conversation and conversion has started, it's time to take a better look at this segment. Maruti Suzuki is undoubtedly the go-to brand when it comes to CNG cars. Not only has it been in this segment for a long time, it also has the widest range of cars on offer. Interestingly, one in every three cars that Maruti sells now is a CNG. Out of these, the Wagoner with its factory fitted CNG kit is a no-brainer. It's easy on the pocket, is immensely practical and adds a lot of value for everyday use. A 60-litre cylinder installed in the boot surely limits your storage capacity, but it compensates with a high return of 33.48 km per kilogram, second highest in the country after the Celerio. It employs the same 1-litre petrol and a CNG unit, which is frugal yet peppy, seamlessly navigating through crowded city roads. Counting the number of Urtigas out on the road is like counting sheep. You will lose count and it will put you to sleep. Despite selling more than 10 lakh units over several years, a factory-fitted CNG Urtiga was widely missed. Up until 2020, when Maruti finally obliged. But the move was mainly to fill the void left by the discontinuation of its diesel sibling. Priced at 10 lakh 78 thousand rupees for the VXI optional and 11 lakh 88 thousand rupees for the ZXI optional version, the Ertiga CNG returns 26.11 kilometers to the kilo from its 1.5 liter unit that develops 102 brake horsepower and 136.8 Newton meters of peak torque, powering the front wheels via its 5-speed manual gearbox. Is that ample for a people mover? Most definitely. Hope you are not bored because our next three suggestions revolutionize the whole CNG game with dual CNG cylinder tech. Essentially, freeing up the boot space to a whole new level. First introduced with the Altros, the dual CNG cylinder tech quickly trickled down to its small SUV, the Punch, and later on, on its subcompact SUV. I'll get to it soon. But unlike other car makers that don't offer much to begin with, Tata ensured that prospective buyers get to choose between seven trims. Not just that, the Punch CNG is the first car in its segment to receive an electric sunroof, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, cruise control, alloy wheels, and pretty much everything from the corresponding trims it's based on. So it's pretty loaded with features. A 5-star global and cap crash test rating only adds to its credibility. Our 
A 1.2 liter unit certainly translates to a peppy ride with 72 brake horsepower and 103 Newton meters of peak torque. But what also adds value is the return of fuel you get with it. In fact, it's better than the Ertiga at 26.99 km per kg. Of course, it's much smaller in size, but worth the mention, no? In FY 2024 alone, Tata Motors sold more than 91,000 units. But the one that could catapult the numbers even further is the Nexon ICNG. But it's not an ordinary CNG version. It is the first CNG car to come with a turbo petrol engine coupled to a CNG unit. So this combo develops 99 brake horsepower, 170 Newton meters of peak torque, and that's a lot coming from a CNG powered subcompact SUV. Add to this is the six speed manual gearbox and the two cylinders worth 30 liters each. Six airbags, ESP, LED DRLs, ISOFIX, hill hole control and, and IRBM are all part of the standard suite. While the top variants receive ventilated front seats, wireless charger, an electric sunroof, and even a panoramic sunroof. JBL sound system adding a touch of premiumness. USP here, like the Punch CNG, is its boot space. 321 liters in the case of the Nexon CNG, but it falls short when compared to the fuel efficiency, 24 kilometers per kilo. It's three chief rivals, the Brezza, Frongs, and even the Taser. In its CNG durations are better prospects in this regard, but the Nexon drives ahead with better equipment. Built on the same idea as Tata's iCNG, Hyundai 2 got onto the dual-cylinder CNG bandwagon with its high CNG duo range of cars, which consists of Aura, Grand Iten Neos, and the Exter. We've picked the latter in our list mainly because of its immense popularity and also the huge list of features it receives. Available in three variants, S, SX and SX Knight, the Exter CNG is priced between 8,50,000 and 9,38,000 rupees, although the punch trumps here with more drills. Having said that, the Exter CNG has its own set of strengths. Automatic climate control, an electric sunroof, an 8-inch infotainment touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, LED headlamps, LED tail lamps, and 15-inch alloy wheels. The list is quite extensive in that regard. This one though returns 27.1 km per kilogram, marginally superior to the CNG punch, thanks to its 1.2-litre petrol engine that produces 68 brake horsepower and 95.2 Newton meters in its CNG mode. So there you have it. CNG cars offer a smart, cost-effective and eco-friendly middle ground between traditional fuel and electric options. Which one of these would you choose? Tell us in the comment section below.